Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here. Today we're gonna to talk about Die Hard 2, Die Harder. That's actually not the title. That's just the tagline, somehow became the title. We're gonna figure out if it's a satisfying sequel or just more of the same on today's Talking About Tapes. Talk, 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 talking about tapes. Hello Mike, who are you? Properly introduce yourself. I am uh, Mike. I am a friend of the family. <laughs> And I, uh, get a little closer to that mic, Mike. Okay. There Sorry, you there you go. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I was your movie buddy for uh, the first formative years of your life. Yes. Uh, so there were three people who would always take me to the movies because my parents weren't really movie theater people. No, they my mom not. was occasionally. Yeah. My dad had to be forced to. <laughs> uh, so it was my grandfather, yes. my godfather, God, God and bless. Mike. I saw most of the movies. <laughs> A lot of the movies on this show with Mike. Yes, uh, we did. What'd you call it? Lord of the Rings we saw together? We saw, yes, we saw. Uh, yes. You liked the uh, trilogies and yes. uh, franchise movies. So yes. we, would have, if, yes. we, we would go back and forth. To yeah, so one. we saw, I saw a lot of movies with Mike. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Who better to talk about Die Hard 2 than Mike? <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and you should have uh, some inside knowledge here because you, you are a police officer. Uh, yes, or, I am. With whatever the official term is, uh, yes. <laughs> um, so you'll you'll be able to provide great insight into this film. Uh, so yes, Die Hard Two, directed by Rennie Harlan. I think this is after he did Nightmare on Elm Street Four and a couple yeah. other films. Before he did Cliffhanger, I think. With us, yeah, with so Stallone, Stallone. Yeah. which is just Die Hard on a mountain. On a mountain, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, yes. Now the funny thing about Die Hard, I don't know if you knew this. Every single Die Hard movie started off as something else. Yes. So the first movie was written by a book written by a guy named, I think, Roderick Thorpe. And they actually spell his name wrong in this movie. Uh, and it turned into Die Hard. Right. Uh, this movie was based off a novel by Walter Wagner called 58 Minutes. Someone grabbed it and they're like, hey, let's just throw John McClane in there and we'll make it Die Hard. And this kept going. Die Hard 5, which I'm never going to talk about after the sentence because I hate it. That is the only Die Hard movie that started off as a Die Hard movie from the beginning. From franchise. Yeah. Right. Three was based off a short story. Four was based off a Wired article. Like they all started something else right. and they somehow turned into Die Hard. And, and Bruce Willis wasn't the first choice for Die Hard. Well, yeah. Uh, on the old show, we talked about this. So the original movie, there was a previous movie written uh, based off that book and that author. And... Frank Sinatra played that character in a movie. So he technically had the first rights to it. So they had to ask him. And thankfully, Frank Sinatra said, no, I'm not going to be jumping out of building. At his age? Thank God. <laughs> yeah, thank God. <laughs> uh, but Die Hard was a huge success. Very good. Yeah. Yes. Uh, where, where are you on the Christmas movie debate for Die Hard? Actually, I, I I was surprised when I saw it that Bruce Willis did a very good job because I only knew him from the. No, no, TV I mean, series, I mean, do you think consider it a Christmas movie? I do. Yes. Thank you. Thank yes, you. I do. Yes, and I if do. you don't, on this channel, we've been working on a short that's supposed to come out this week where we made Die Hard a Christmas movie. So look I, forward to that. I think it's yes. I, I, <laughs> I do think too. This is a Christmas movie. Yes. Now yeah. this movie, Die Hard Two, has a great cast. So you have yes. the original people returning, Bonnie Bedelia, uh, Bruce Willis, um, uh, William Atherton. The reporter. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but you also get, like, look at this, Franco Nero, the original Django as General Esperanza. William Sadler as Colonel Stewart. He played Death in Bill and Ted. Right. Uh, recently, he was like the president in the new Marvel movies. Uh, John Amos from Coming to America in Good Times as Major Grant. Dennis Franz from NYPD Blue as Captain pre, Carmine. Pre, yes, pre. Yeah, yeah, pre, yeah pre NYPD yeah. Blue. Yeah, a lot of these people are like pre. Pre, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, Art Evans from Fright Night, which we reviewed uh, in September as the airport chief engineer. Fred right. Thompson as the Fred. flight director. Cole Meany from Star Trek as the British pilot. Could you tell he was British? Did they make it obvious that everyone on that plane was British? Two, but yes. <laughs> yeah. was, uh, um, and you also get a young Robert Patrick, and I have here Crybaby John Leguizamo. Have you seen John Leguizamo's uh, whole publicity stunt lately? No, I know he's got a new movie coming out. Yeah, uh, Bet uh, uh, Santa, Santa, something. Yeah, something about a Santa movie. Yeah, uh, it comes out uh, December. I'm not trying to plug it. Yeah, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not in the movie. Uh, yeah, no, I know exactly what you're talking about. No, lately he's mad at the new Super Mario Brothers movie coming out, the animated one 
For what? Uh, he's mad at the casting, and I was like, oh, he probably thinks them not picking Italians to play Italian characters is a bad idea. No, he's mad that they picked white people to be Mario and Luigi. He's mad at that. And then I'm sitting there, I'm like, John, you played Luigi. You're not Italian, Italian you yeah. son of a bitch. <laughs> he is going on a whole rant about it, and like the whole time I'm like, yeah, but you're not Italian and you play Luigi. You should uh, not be pointing fingers. He might be in Roots, the next generation. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know how that works. But Tom Leguizamo in Roots. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he's... Yeah, that, I don't know. I, I didn't I get him like, yeah, but you're not be, Italian. Yeah, you, you should have right, no say in right. this. And he did play. He did play the Yeah, he played Luigi in the movie. So I, I don't... I, don't yeah. uh, I mean, I get it. I hate that Chris Pratt is Super Mario. Like, I hate it. But, yeah, like, I, I not just, for the reasons he hates. <laughs> yeah, I think they want this for name recognition and, you know, like... I don't know one yeah. single person who's excited. For everyone who hears Chris Pratt, they're like, oh, that's a terrible idea. But anyway, yeah. the one last thing. Uh, ironically, this is the one Die Hard movie that Siskel and Ebert loved. Like, Ebert gave this a higher rating than Die Hard 1, and they even put it on the back of the box here. I, I, I think it has to... To me, I, I think it's the characters were more complex. I think I, I think the, the, the characters altogether had like some type of a background. You you, you could either root for them or there go were, against yeah. Them. The, there is something to the supporting characters like, in this like, that make them stand out a little right, bit. Right, Die Hard, the first Die Hard, you knew there was a bad guy, a yeah. good guy. You know, yeah. you, you were surprised that the movie was good. Yeah, but here there was a development. Like, yeah, like of now characters. now did you see this when it came out? Yes, I did go see that but what were your memories of it coming out because i grew up watching this on hbo and cinemax they used to play them all the time right but i didn't get to see it in theaters so do you have I, any I, memories of it yes uh well i saw die hard the original one yeah and i i go to movies to escape my yeah. job and <laughs> all the pressures and everything so i thought it was fun i thought it well was... that must have been bad because you this is totally accurate right you probably went there like oh man i just got caught in a building last right. week yes i jumped out of a plane the other day <laughs> yeah. no i couldn't make die hard because i'm afraid i'm terrified of heights so. <laughs> unless they made it on the first floor it, it would have been i would pay to see that movie where it's just like <laughs> die shorter it's like your wife is up there and there's terrorists like what floor yeah, uh is... floor 70 uh no that's I, I love my wife dearly but she better come 69 floors down <laughs> she's smart she'll figure it out I'll <laughs> yes yes she'll ask 400 questions and say no more because go down listen we yeah i'm sorry um but yeah uh like i said i used to watch all the diehard movies they played them constantly right um and i fell in love with them i watched them this one played a lot on tv like the especially first one, around christmas yeah around christmas <laughs> right. uh in like the late 90s they would play the Die Hard 2, for some reason, got played the most. More than Die Hard 1 on, like, cable and whatnot. Yeah. And then the second most played one was Die Hard 3, because that was the newer one. Right. Uh, but that one Samuel played... Samuel Jackson. Yes, yes. That one played all year round. Uh, so I watched Die Hard 2 a lot. It's not my favorite one. Uh, but there is stuff to like in it, and there is stuff to, like... I like Die cool. Hard 2 the best because it's... Really? More, because there are more characters. Now, if you look okay. at Die Hard 1, it's, it's three main characters. Yeah. It's... Uh, John, John, uh, uh, the police officer, Al, and then Al, the Al. bad guy. Yes. Die Hard Three is three main characters. Yeah, and they went back to that formula where it's John. Yeah. You're right. A lot of the supporting Samuel Jackson, yeah. and then the bad guy. Yeah, a lot of the supporting characters in this get a lot of screen time, and it, yeah, they make the, it. You you're more invested with them because they have a backstory. You know, they actually. I can see that. Right. I do like the characters. I think the plot is a little weak, but uh, we'll oh, go definitely, it here. <laughs> definitely, yes. Now it starts with John getting his mother-in-law's car towed, uh, so he's already off to a bad Christmas like mm -hmm. last year. Uh, I love that John now, in between Die Hard One and Two, he has now moved to L.A. and he hates it because he's trying to like talk to the cop. And he's like, look, I'm an L.A. cop. And the cop's like, I hate L.A. He's like, no, I do, too. But just bear with me here. Yes, and I don't know why he moved to L.A. Because for, she lived out there. Yeah, I, yeah, but I... Ugh. Remember, that started their marital problems because she wanted to move out there and he well, didn't. Well, the the, the, uh, the thing with police officers, we, we go through three or four divorces. So <laughs> I, that's why I didn't know why. Like, well, 
<laughs> They're not divorced yet. Trust yeah, me. I'm just saying. You know, which, by the way, I want all, like a like a diehard spinoff that's just like the divorce, where he's just like, I saved your ass so many times. <laughs> I like blew things I, up. I can't right get there. the I can't get the house. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, he's I, in a shitty apartment. I, I'm about to say I I, I I half my pension and now I lose a house. And <laughs> um, so yeah, we find out. I love that he's getting towed by that guy. That's pretty mm -hmm. funny. And um, th so apparently they're in. DC visiting the in-laws. He's there to pick Holly up. Uh, we find out on TV that there's this guy named General Esperanza, and he was funded by the military, and he used the funds to run drugs and do other shady things. Uh, and then we get introduced by to the main bad guy, Colonel Stewart, and what better way to introduce your villain than have him doing naked Tai Chi? I think that's a great way to introduce your villain. I, I think they wanted to make sure to show how what kind of prowess he had. Like, yeah. I mean, he yeah. was he was yeah. shredded. He was disciplined. <laughs> He's he very different. Tough. I will right. say he is very different than Hans Gruber. They made him very different. I like I like Hans because yeah. I thought he was more realistic as far as he had that like suave right kind of and die like he thought things through. He, yeah, he didn't have to do muscles. He had yeah. He had he had brain. Th this guy's muscles and brain. <laughs> he, he's he is he is Urod. Yes. Yeah, he and is. he is uh he's shady. He's in bed with uh. Uh, shady characters and uh, they're extraditing General Esperanza to the US I guess to like try him on stuff yeah yeah it's a little convoluted but the they're still in the military which I'm yeah, he's sorry. in the military but yeah. he's going rogue clearly because he was I think he was the guy who was funding General right, Esperanza yeah, yeah. right yeah, yeah apparently it was based off like a lot of the Iran contra right, stuff yes, yeah yes yes uh, so yeah John calls shout out to Reagan yeah <laughs> shout out to Reagan <laughs> Ronald, thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> thank you for all that. Oh, that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of war on drugs here. Thank you, Nancy Reagan. That was yeah, a great yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite thing. It's just like the crack war on... egg. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is your your <laughs> your brain on drugs. Crack a egg. Okay. <laughs> this is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. Questions. Yeah. What are you on? So yeah, John calls Holly's plane. Uh, to make plans for later. This becomes like a glaring uh, goof. Like the phones on the planes always work. That's what I was trying to figure out. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. No that. one ever thinks to when the radios are down, they show the phones still work. It's like, well, why is no one just calling the plane? <laughs> uh, you know what? I, if you know what I miss seeing in movies, beepers. That was just a brief window of time where you had beepers yes. in movies and yes. it never showed up again. I, I might have had a beeper for a year, I think. Um, I remember, it? yeah, my mom and dad had beepers. Like I thought yeah. they were like, and then they started spelling on them, and I was like, eh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I never like it took me years to figure out like how they worked. I was always so confused by them. Like you know what? When I'm older, I'll figure out beepers. And then I got older, yeah. and they just they, they disappeared. Yeah, yeah. Like um, the phone booth. I bet you they still make them. I bet oh, you there's yeah, some company that's yeah, still yeah, makes there's them. Some, and, there, and I bet you there's some guy at a disco club <laughs> with one right now. <laughs> that would be uh, me in a couple years. <laughs> Oh, so I want to ask a question. All right. Mm -hmm. So the old lady next to Holly on the plane. Yes. She's Sweet showing woman. off her taser. I zap any bastard that screws with me. Now, Mike, I wasn't around. I was only around for a few months in the 80s. I was not on a plane. Were you allowed to bring tasers yes. on? A, oh, you were. Back in the day, uh, you, well, before 9-11. That's the thing. My memory yeah. of air yeah. travel is fuzzy was, before 9-11. It, it was a lot differently. People <laughs> didn't... Uh, didn't uh, have that sense of in, uh, insecurity yeah. or, or threats. So on you a could plane. just bring a taser. Oh, people put a lot of things onto planes. Okay, because the previous movie, I wanted to ask a question about this. Is it okay for an off duty cop to just bring his firearm on a plane? No. No, there you have, okay. you uh, today you have rules and regulations. Yeah. But even in the were you allowed to do that in the eighties? I don't think you would be allowed. To. I don't. I'm not sure because I wasn't. I came on in uh, 89, oh, okay. 88, 80, 88, 89, and I didn't really fly. I always okay. travel because that always cracks me over the but first I, time. I don't know why you would. You know, back like the 80s is different. I mean, know? they just they, the reason they did it in the first place. They wanted to show that he was a cop. But I'm just like every time I watch it, I'm like, I don't think you were allowed to do that. I, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not even going to lie here because uh, someone will fact check me and I. Don't, yes. I don't, yes. If so we find out that there's there's bad guys nearby. They take over the local church. Uh, I love when they kill the guy in the church. I love that his arm just like plops down when they cut through his dead body. <laughs> and why did you need to kill him? 
Yeah, well, they needed to set up their thing there. and Okay, but, it, but did, didn't he work? Wasn't it, wasn't my understanding the church was part of the because at the end of the movie, they, yeah. Well, no, no, it was <clears throat> wasn't it was he built around something that was connected to the airport, right? But, but it wasn't part of the airport. But wasn't he a worker or wouldn't someone miss him? No, I think he was just the guy who owned that church. Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's even meaner. Wow, that's even you, meaner. You if you kill think a man about. of uh, yeah, of a uh, god, yeah. Wow. Why don't they just like tie him up or something? Like that's what I'm saying. Escape. Yeah, uh, we have to show that they're bad guys. Um, that's so a bad guy. Yeah. That's so they're all setting guy. up in the airport. So John uh, is sitting at the um, cafeteria and he's mm-hmm. not minding his own business because, of course, he's not. He, he, <laughs> he's, he's spying got, on he, everyone. The, the, yeah, the bad guy. See, I couldn't be in a Die Hard movie because I, I mind my own goddamn business. <laughs> I would see like generals coming in, changing stuff, and I'm like, you know what? Not my problem. <laughs> I'm still up. trying to get my car back. <laughs> yeah, okay, I would <laughs> still be trying to get <laughs> The movie I, would end with me at the I, counter. Like, I would sit there car? being so angry angry about the car right. i wouldn't see anything mm-hmm. right i'm so you know but he sees them uh and he he already assumes that the airport cops are useless because they towed him so he doesn't give them a heads up um i do like colonel stewart cursing out the reporter i thought that was pretty funny <laughs> colonel stewart can we have a few words please you can have two fucking you yeah you can't do that today. you can't do that today you can't, you can't do it. i mean you can it's funny yeah, but you get in a lot of yeah, trouble yeah, you can't um, here's another question I have. Um, so John sees the bad guys go into the baggage area. Right. Uh, so he goes up to secure ba- Yeah. That's yeah, why yeah. That's, that's, it's like off limits off, to right. civilians. Right. Mm-hmm. And he goes up to the guy who works there and he flashes his LA cop badge to let him in. Are you allowed to, when you're off duty, just flash your badge from if a different I'm in George- Chicago and I'm an LA cop, I would have probably got a, Chicago well, they're in DC. Co- they're in DC. I mean, DC. Yeah. I would have. Uh, I would have got a uh, a DC officer yeah. walked up. But yeah, yeah I, mean, I don't think you could let a cop who's but this not is a from fantasy that. movie. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean. but I'm sitting there because whenever I watch this, movie, I think about it realistically. I don't, no, I don't. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think a cop from out of town can make you open something up without a warrant. That guy should have been like, leave me alone. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't you looking for your car, sir? Yeah. You got other problems, <laughs> right. John. Your mother-in-law is going to be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> But do you think that led to the divorce between movies? Like, sure, you saved my daughter, but, <laughs> but, right, but my car. Um, so, yeah, he uh, goes in there. He ends up fighting the henchmen. He kills one of them in some baggage machine. Yes. I do like that he chases the guy on a bicycle. I always forget that there's a scene of John riding a bicycle with a little basket chasing one of the guys down. But these two guys that he killed were, uh, they weren't just any bad guys. No, no. They were military trained. Yes. Bad guy. Yes, yes. They mm-hmm. they are they, they're, they're the elite. They're technically dead as we find out later because right. they fake their deaths. So there's so many coincidences in this movie, Mike. Uh, he's fighting bad guys on Christmas Eve again. And Richard Thornburg, the reporter, is on the same plane as Holly. Could and, you believe it? Well, he was going somewhere, right? He was, he was going to D.C. Yeah, but for some, I thought he they gave him a little backstory of why he was well. On the plane. Yeah, well, it, on the plane he was supposed to be first class, right? And, and they moved, moved him to, to the other guys. But he sees Holly, <laughs> and he's just like, "I have a restraining order. I need to be fifty yards away from her." And I think they're like, "That's the length of the plane." <laughs> right, 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 all right, all right. Uh, I I don't think you need a Richard Thur. I feel like they were. This is where it tries to be too much like the original. Like, I well, think we they gotta try get- to connect. Yeah, to make yeah. sure. That, they're like, yeah. "Well, we need that guy back again." It's like, do we? I don't think we need him back. There was, we'll get to it at some point. Mm-hmm. There was one person they needed to bring back and they give him the shaft, but we'll get to that scene soon. Um, uh, I love, I have it here. Like I haven't watched NYPD Blue in a million years, but seeing Dennis Franz just chew out John McClane, I'm like, I feel like I want to rewatch. I want to watch that show at some point. <laughs> you, he's after a good see, actor. After seeing the uh, TV show and then seeing the movie, yes, he's an underrated actor. Yeah, I feel he, like he, he should be in yeah. way more things, and, uh, right? Uh, but that... Uh, like I said, I guess when you play a, a cop in Die Hard, you get your own TV series. So <laughs> I'm hoping uh, Die Hard 7 that I can get. Uh, uh, if you guys are listening, I'm, uh, I'm up for uh, Die Hard 7, the revenge of the uh I do the think donut. one of the cops in Die Hard 3 
I think he ended up being a little law and order or something. Uh, but I have to yeah, check. Uh, yes. Yeah. They wanted to. Yes. So, so just be a cop and die cop, hard. Yes. And you will get on a cop TV show. It's yes. that easy. Yes. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? <laughs> Well, it's a little harder to get into a Die Hard movie these days. I don't know if they're making another one. No, I, I hope not. <laughs> uh, I hope not. Especially after that last one. Yeah. I never... That was like... I watched it. I saw yeah, it. Yeah, side, side note. Uh, when 2013, when that came out, uh, a, a girl broke up with me, so I was sad. Oh. And my friend said, Tony, don't worry. There's a new Die Hard out. Okay. We'll go see that. And I walked out of the theater and I went, I'm more depressed now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, the best thing that did was get my mind off the breakup because that was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It, 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 it was different. It yeah. was bad. It was yeah, so they bad. They tried to put too much into yeah. it. Yeah. Um, they could have stopped at four. They that really could, should have. Four's underrated. Four's, four's not bad. Good. But yeah. It, yeah, three, if they stopped at three, it would have been like, three would have, yeah, it would have been, been the perfect. Batman uh, yeah. uh, trilogy. It would have been perfect. But mm-hmm. anyway, um, Jenner Esperanza, he tries to get a soldier to free him and it doesn't work. Uh, and by the way, Franco Nero, he apparently did not want to do this movie. Like he like said he read the script and he hated it and he just didn't want to do it. And it shows. Yes. <laughs> it really shows. Because he's stiff and he could die, yeah. yeah. Uh apparently because he was like signed on to another movie, but Joel Silver, the producer, worked it out where they could film both of them at the same time. So he's like, all right, I guess I'll do it. What what would uh, you know what other movie? Was? I didn't write it in my notes. Oh, okay. You can look it up, but uh no. yeah, it, it came out around okay. the same time. Franco Nero, he uh he directs movies now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. He directed a movie recently. He uh, he cast an actor in it. Uh, he decided to cast uh, Kevin Spacey. Post accusations, he cast Kevin Spacey in a movie. And I'm like, oh, wow. That's that's a bold choice there, Franco Nero. Uh, he, I would have waited a couple of years personally, but well, you do Ke- you, Franco. Yeah, Kevin's a, a, a you know. <laughs> he's a controversial person. Yes. Franco was in the uh, Django Unchained. I don't think a lot of people know that, that he's the original Django. I did not know that. Yeah, there's a if you see Django and Chain. Uh, I don't. The are you Tar- me, uh, yeah, yes, with yeah, Jamie Foxx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's I that scene like where Jamie Foxx Fox is uh, sitting with Franco Nero, and he tells him how his name's spelled, and Franco Nero's like, "Yeah, I know." And I'm like, "Oh, that's a fun nod because he was Django in the oh, old Italian." Okay, okay. There's like, uh, there's one Django movie, and then because the Italians love to just rip off stuff, even their own stuff, there are like. A hundred unofficial Django sequels. I could believe. So that was the joke with Django and Jane. It could be considered another unofficial like uh, ripoff. Oh, hello, new person in the store. Hi. You know what season it is? I have no idea. Tis the season for clean balls. Fa la 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 la. La, our friends at Manscaped are helping you clear your driveway for safe travels this holiday season. From stocking stuffers to white elephants, Manscaped products are at the top of every wish list. Grab some crop mops for your pops or the body buffer for the holiday lover. Win this year's white elephant gift and help all the men in your life go from eggnog to nice hog this December. And save 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash hack20. So hello, uh, Chris, is it? That's me. Do you uh, do you shave your balls? Do you have a ball shaver? Uh, I do. You do? Yeah. Is it the Manscaped uh, 4.0? It is not. Oh, man. Let me tell you. With Manscaped, you know, you know those jokes about stocking stuffers that yep. I was saying? That's not just a joke. I used the Manscaped today, and I was able to stuff this entire stocking. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that is all me, baby. Yeah. Whew. Anyway, let me throw that right there. Listen, Manscaped is your one-stop shop for all your holiday needs. They have the perfect gift. In the Platinum Package 4.0, plus loads of little presents, perfect for stocking stuffers. Would you agree that there's no better gift than the gift of good hygiene and a few laughs? Uh, I could agree with that, yeah. Do all the gifts that you give, are they? do they all involve good hygiene and good laughs? Uh, they should, now that I'm thinking about it. Yes, well then Manscaped is right up your alley. Manscaped offers a handful of their liquid formulations too, okay? Get this, shampoos body washes, upstairs and downstairs deodorant gels, exfoliants, absolutely everything they could need to keep it clean. You like to keep things clean upstairs and downstairs? I do. You Good, good. Chris, I want you to know I care about your chestnuts and I don't want your chestnuts to roast in the wrong boxers, okay? Get your chestnuts a pair of Manscapes boxers, specially made to keep the area cool and provide holiday comfort all year round. 
Sound good? I mean, it does get kind of stinky down there sometimes. Yeah, I, 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 I know. Don't ask Cal. And I was concerned, so that's why I'm getting you this. Chris, do you have nasty nose hairs? I do. Well, let me tell you about this. I'm going to save your life with the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. I need both of those, actually. Yeah, I, you're getting both of those with this deal. Chris, how are those nails looking? Uh, I don't even want to show them to you. I don't want to see them until you use the Shears 2.0. It's their full kit for nail care with scissors, clippers, tweezers, and a file for the traveling man. There's this new Preserve Cologne that brings a light, breezy, woodsy feel and gives that fresh tree scent even after Christmas is over. Your, your junk's going to smell like a tree. How's that sound? <laughs> Sounds actually... Probably amazing. It sounds pretty nice. It's yeah. pretty nice. Uh, are you uh, using any loofahs when you shower, Chris? No. Well, don't. Because I'm going to get you the body buffer. Okay? Loofahs, they actually hold bacteria from dead skin. You want to wash yourself with bacteria? Gross! We're going to throw out all those old disgusting loofahs and we're going to get the body scrubber that feels smoother but acts tougher. Lastly, top off the stocking, like that stocking right oh, there, no. with the crown jewel for their family jewels in the Lawnmower 4.0. The Electric Razor's advanced skin safe technology is a life changer and known for reducing nicks and cuts on your Santa sack. How many times you cut your Santa sack? Uh, a good bit. Well, you definitely need the lawnmower 4.0. I haven't uh, clipped my Santa snack in a... <laughs> I haven't cut these bad boys in a very long time. Manscaped is here to make the holiday shopping a blast by giving products that you'll love and that you can give to other people and make them laugh. Have I sold you on the Manscaped? I think I need it. I'm getting you all of these. You're going to get that Platinum Package 4.0, baby. And you're going to get it for 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash hack20. That's right. 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash hack20. Manscaped for a perfect gift that will be the holiday's biggest hit. Yeah, so the soldier doesn't give in, but he lights his uh, cigar for him. Now, the biggest mistake this movie made, Reginald Val Johnson, Al, only has one scene. The, of all the characters from Die Hard 1 that you wanted to see come back and yes. be part of the story in Die Hard 2. Well, how would you bring them in, though? Uh, you'd have to rewrite it, but it, uh, they'd be on vacation together. They're friends now. Maybe they're vacationing together somewhere. It doesn't have to be DC. Right, but I do you see him as a action? <laughs> yes, because he he learned he gained the confidence to shoot people again at well, the end of Die Hard. Right, right, yes. <laughs> well, well, I love that that's his character arc. He's like, oh yeah, I shot someone and I feel bad about it. I'll never do it again. At the end, he's like, you know what? I'm cool to shoot a people now. Right, well, therapy. <laughs> that therapy. was real therapy. 90 for minutes him. of therapy. Uh <laughs> Uh, we'll always do that. Our, our Al and our Die Hard short will have a very similar character arc. Yes, I was wondering how they would bring him back, but yes, he was a very good. He was a good character. Yeah, he's one. like one of the most memorable things. Yeah, they, they they worked well together. Yes. I wonder if it was like a scheduling thing. Like, was he like deep into family matters at that point? He might have been. Yeah, right. So yeah, fa yeah fa family member uh, matters did yeah. come out. Yeah. That's the only pass so, I'll give them. I couldn't right. find anything on that. I'm going to research it a little further. But it was just like. I remember even like the first time I saw Die Hard 2, I was just like, oh, yeah, where's that guy? Oh, well, maybe he's not in it. And then they show him. They give him a little. He, he yeah. talks to him on the phone. He he um he runs the uh, fingerprints for the dead guy. Okay. Yeah, he runs the fingerprints for him because the cops there aren't helping him. Right. But it's like, I thought he was going to like keep calling Al and Al was going to help him out. And it's just like, nope, that's Al's only scene. And I'm like, that is terrible. Why would you do that? So but, that's the biggest disappointment. But you're wanting more. See? See? So now. I want more. And it it's worse that we never get Al ever again. Yeah, I was surprised. But yeah. yeah. I, it, and I understood how how they were going to try to work him in. But. Yeah. Uh, so that's disappointing. Because I do like Reginald Val Johnson. Yes. He, um, I didn't watch the extended cut of Avengers Endgame. He apparently was in Avengers Endgame and they cut a scene out. And he was like real salty about it for a few weeks. As what? I think he might have been a cop or something. <laughs> he had a scene. Right, right. 
I just remember they're like, I saw an article. It's like Reginald Val Johnson is upset that his scene from the biggest movie of all time is not in the film. I, I would love to know what he did. Yeah, did. I'd have to look it up. Jessica, my editor, Jessica, if you could find the Reginald Val Johnson scene, oh, that would be look at a plate yeah, here. Yes, yes, that would be um, amazing. I mean that movie was ten million hours long, but I would have, I would have, I, I love this. I liked it too, but I would, I would have tolerated a minute more of Reginald Al Johnson. Yes, 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 I would love to know what he. So, what he did. in addition to the terrorists, there's now a huge snowstorm coming in. Yes, which blizzard, guess, a blizzard. Yes, which I guess worked out for the terrorists. I mean that helped them out. Um, John works his way up to the tower. The radio tower at the airport, he somehow weasels his way up there. Uh, he should be arrested like 10 times over by now. He he really for trespassing or uh, trespassing. Uh, he killed that guy. They don't know he's a bad guy yet. Right. He really should. Like, we're going to hold you for a bit. I think you murdered a man. I would just hold him for you know, the, yeah. the toe in the car and just, you know, put yeah. him in the room yeah. and wait. <laughs> so many things you're going to Obviously, they don't know about parking wars. But he constantly throughout this movie. John McClane just shows up in places he's not supposed to be. And they're like, oh, this guy again. I'm like, can someone put handcuffs on this dude? And for someone that's complaining, he gets no help. Yeah. He gets help. Yeah, he gets a he lot gets, of help from people. He gets help. So, yeah, he works his way up to the tower to let them know, like, hey, that guy was like a mercenary who they said was already dead. How do we kill him twice? They're clearly something bigger going on here. And then Stewart's men, they turn the runway lights off of the airport. Uh, they start like messing with the equipment and whatnot. So now they can't contact the planes unless they call them on the phones, which uh, apparently allegedly, still right, work. Right, right. They come. It's so like I don't know how no one caught it. Well, did they have five G back then? <laughs> I That's guess it. they, they did. Must have had five G. See, <laughs> it is funny because so, like she's bragging about how like we have air phones now, and he's like, my wife keeps telling me to use fax machines and join the 90s. I'm like, oh, this is so dated. This is so this, dated. Yes, yes. It's one thing if they were just using it, but the fact that they, like, call it out, it's like, all right, you're really dated. It's a dated. shout out, yes. Yeah, it's, it's like out. when you watch a movie uh, with, like, with cell phones where they're, like, they're flipping it to look cool, and it's like, oh, that's dated. But I think he brought some of his uh, moonlighting stick yeah. into yeah because that's what he would do in moonlighting oh okay he would, he would call things out he would call things out yeah i never really got around to watch make fun of himself right, right yeah i gotta watch moonlighting john he's in an elevator because they're trying to kick him out mm -hmm. and he starts climbing into the elevator shaft and he says it's okay i've done this before it's okay i've done this before remember die hard mm -hmm. and then right after that the same shit happened to the same guy twice Remember Die Hard? There's a lot of that in this. It's like, yeah, no, we remember Die Hard 1. We're watching Die Hard 2. You don't have to keep reminding us about right. Die Hard you, 1. Yes. You, like, like we're, we're here. We get it. We, yes. we, we saw it. We liked it. We're here now. We, we got it. All right. Um, what's it called? Uh, years ago, Ben Stiller's old show. They did like a Die Hard parody. It's like Die Hard 12. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's, a, there's a bar where he's just like, how could the same thing happen to the same guy so many times? Because this is this is the ultimate sequel trap, which was popular around this time, where it's like, we're doing it again, but somewhere else. Right. right. Yes. And not even sequels. People forget there were a ton of Die Hard ripoffs, like under siege. It's like, oh, it's Die Hard on a submarine. Oh, uh, right. Or yes, on a boat. Yes. Yeah. Or yeah. cliffhanger. It's Die Hard on a mountain. There's a bunch of them. Uh, so yeah, the, the whole like remember Die Hard scenes. It's like, okay, I, right. I'm enjoying the new stuff. I don't need to be reminded of the old stuff. Right. Uh, one of the things I do enjoy is Marvin, the janitor, the, the super helpful janitor that he runs into. <laughs> that that this happens to know the whole layout of the He happens airport, to know right? the whole layout. And they do this again in Die Hard 3 where he meets that truck driver who just knows everything about the tunnel. The, quarter, the quarters, yeah, and how much, yeah, what you yeah. need. And, I feel uh, like right. Die Hard 3, I feel like that was making fun of this. It's like, oh, wow, what, what luck. John just ran into a guy who knows everything and needs to give him all the information. But the sad thing is I have run into people that, uh, that, that work, but no, you yeah. know, they know more than, uh, so, uh, so when you, know. you were fighting terrorists at an airport, you found a janitor that helped you. <laughs> I, I will be honest with you. <laughs> you would be surprised. The people that run the airport, the ones that you want to know are probably the, the what they would call the lower workers because yeah, they, they probably would know. They everything. know yeah. They know everything because yeah. they do everything. Yeah. So no, you're right. That's exactly the Honestly. bosses aren't going to know where the bathroom is <laughs> yeah. or 
where's the tunnel for this? They're right. like, we don't freaking know. I come to work and I work here in a tower. So, yes. That makes a lot of sense then. Shout, shout out to all the, the hard yeah. workers that actually do. Their and, and shout out to Marvin, who really should be saying, who are you? You're not a local cop. Leave me alone. <laughs> but instead, he's like, yeah, I'll tell you how to get to the skywalk. Uh, yeah. So there's like a thing that they're going to that's being built. Right. That's going to help them get the radio uh, signal and whatnot. Uh, and uh, John figures out that it's uh, it's a trap because they're Before sending they like get it right. They're sending their best men with that chief engineer to go there. They were sending SWAT, right? Yeah, like they big send, SWAT team. SWAT. Yeah, with SWAT the chief team. engineer uh, to go because they're going to go there, and they don't. He doesn't. They don't realize that there's people there waiting for them. Uh, and then Except I have John does. Huh? John, John does. does. Right. Uh, and then I have here John McClane is crawling in a vent. Remember, Die Hard. <laughs> you need a lighter. <laughs> yeah, he didn't do the lighter in this. I know, I was about to say, you just need, if yeah. you did the I lighter. Do, I do like his rant where he's like, I just want a Christmas turkey, <laughs> and I want this, and I want that. Like, yeah. He's so frustrated. <laughs> Die Hard one? Yeah. Uh, Robert Patrick's uh, sitting duck line is pretty cool. What do I look like to you? A sitting duck. Where the guy's uh. like... He's like, what do you think I am? And he's like, sitting duck. And it's fun to think that, like, in the span of, like, two or three years, Robert Patrick went from being nameless henchman to, like, the most memorable film villain of all time in Terminator 2. Like, in just a couple years. And he, But he played the same type of character. Which yeah, he, well, he, kind he, of like, he is very stern and cold he, in this. He, he, he ran with it, and God bless but him. But look, he changed it, because, you know, recently we reviewed the Double Dragon movie, and he's a very different villain in that. Really? Oh, you never saw the Double nah, Dragon I movie in the nah, 90s? Nah, yeah, that episode that. didn't do well. I'm starting to think a lot of people didn't watch <laughs> the Double Dragon movie. But he's in that. He has, like, bleach blonde hair, Ooh. and he's, like, real jokey and whatnot. I love Robert Patrick. We've, uh, actually, yes. he, we've actually reviewed a lot of his movies this year. We did, like, uh, The Faculty. Remember The Faculty? Yes. That was awesome. And what did he play? He played, well, that one he played uh, the asshole gym teacher, but he's one of, like, the main aliens. Right, right. And he survives at the end. He's one of the guys who gets cured at the oh, end. Oh, yeah, for, he, yeah, for yeah. Uh, the salt. Yes, yeah, he sniffs there. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for him to, like, get, like, the ultimate death. And I was like, oh, no, he makes it out fine. I, I think he was part of the star. That probably was in his contract. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah so. Um, so, yeah, it's fun to see him just, like, a random henchman in this. Uh, and I have here, there's some decent action scenes in, the, in this movie. There's yes. some really good action mm -hmm. scenes. Uh, and I think that is one of the things that Roger Ebert liked. Uh, but I have here, Bruce Willis rolling around on the floor is not one of them. And there's one point where he ducks and he's just rolling on the floor shooting. And it's yeah, like, I, I, I don't, and it and, and didn't miss. Didn't he miss. didn't miss didn't at all. Miss. I, I don't know if I could roll on the floor. And, <laughs> I don't know if I could stand here and hit that wall. So. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Well, my favorite thing is um, my dad, who was also a cop. Yes, he is. He, yeah, I've worked uh, with him. We went to a uh, family vacation once. We did uh, the, I think it was the Men in Black ride where you have to shoot. Oh, sh okay, yeah. And they take a picture. Okay. And they took a picture of all of us, and he's got like one eye closed, and he's trying to, <laughs> we're like, wait a minute. And he had, the funniest thing was, we didn't let him live this down. I'm like, dad, you had the worst score of all oh, of really? us. Really? Oh, wow. Well. We we won't let that one out. I'm like I feel like you should have had maybe not even the best. I would I wouldn't have I would have spared him if he wasn't the best. But I'm like you should have been the lowest. Listen, listen. <laughs> he was tired that day. Oh, he was yeah. tired that day. He he took you kids out. He was tired. All that day. <laughs> that's that's what the excuse I would use with my kids. I'm tired, kid. Oh, I'm tired, kid. Normally, if I had right. enough rest, <laughs> I'm a I'm a hundred percent. Yes, and then I have here. Uh, there's also some good effects of this film. There's amazing miniatures, some composite map paintings. However, the dummy that gets cra crushed by the scaffolding is not one of them. You could see, yes, you you could see that it's not. Yes, uh, and fans of this show know uh, a fake dummy when they see it. Oh no! Ah! Oh! <laughs> In hindsight, because I, I, like I said, I go to, to, yeah. to for the fantasy of the movie, but in hindsight, these are military men, and yet they stand still while he's yeah. rolling over. Like, 
it like, just stands there. Well, like, even like the they guy, take out the SWAT who are yeah. professional, and but they stand still for John. Yeah. I like uh, that Robert Patrick catches the grate to hold and then just get shot like a million times. Like, why did you catch it? Why did you keep holding it? I, I would have ducked behind it. Or jumped it, out of the way. Right, and ducked yeah. behind it for... Uh, Even the guy who gets crushed, it's like you turned around and screamed instead of just rolling out of the way. <laughs> Wait, it, but you're military. You're, yeah. you're not turning around. I would... Yeah, <laughs> we would be dead. I would we would be dead in five seconds. We expect more from these guys. Yes, I'm sorry. The movie's over now. I love to make a movie where it's just us. Like, there's a big thing going on, but the whole movie is us just trying not to get involved. And we try not to get shot. Yeah, like we got to get out of here. Right, like, right. like they're gonna break into the vault. Like, good for them. We right. just want to leave. Right. I already paid my bill. So, <laughs> no. mm -hmm. I agree with you. Yes. Yeah, I'm good with that. Um, so yeah, uh, I have here, Colonel Stewart is anti-war on drugs and anti-communist. And then I have, is he the bad guy? Moving on. Uh, he goes on that whole rant about it. I, I don't, was he? I mean. I don't know. That's what he claims to be. Or he could just be doing what Hans Gruber did in the first one. Where he's I mean, just making this, it all this was up. The, this was the 80s, right? <laughs> yeah. This is, so war on drugs. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, so, yeah. yeah. He's anti all of that. He would not be the bad guy these days. <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, so Stewart sabotages uh, the flight's landing, uh, the British flight, where they're very British. They want to remind you that they're very British. They bring it up constantly. They're like, what the devil's going on here? Like, oh, we're just like British Rail. It's like, yeah, I get it. We yeah, get it, guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, so why John, was she on a British plane? Uh, no, okay. <laughs> but they, John tries to stop it and his plan is like, I'm going to light two sticks on fire and do this. It's like, that's not good. Yeah, I, I, uh, I've been at an airport, and which, yeah. which is funny. Yes, yeah. you, you you will literally be killed if you yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that, yeah. The engines will just blow you right off. Yeah, by the way, there's no one working on this airfield. No, no. <laughs> During a storm. Yeah. And there's no plows or anything. And they there. mentioned the plows earlier in the film. They're like, yeah, we'll do plows between the flights. We never see anyone plowing once. And they knew to have uh, ski jets to be. A yeah, that was weird sun. too. Um, but yeah, now the the plane blows up. Awesome, cool explosion. That really good of, effect. Actually, it was one of the best. Yes. Yeah, the effects are like crazy in this. And they, uh, you know, they put. I don't want to cut you off, but they put that back when when he first asked the guy for a, a light. Yeah. And he said, no, it wouldn't. And then at the end of the movie, oh. he gets his light <laughs> and he blows up the plane. That's funny. Yes. That is funny. Mm -hmm. I didn't catch on to that. Yes. Uh, but yeah, now he the gets clock, to light the plane. Yeah. The clock is ticking. Holly's plane is low on fuel. Full. Mm -hmm. yeah. Holly's plane is low on fuel. But don't worry. There's a counter terrorist team on the way. Yes. And their army. Or Marines. No one can seem to agree on that. Like I think John, he said special force. Yeah, but then John calls them the Marines, and then the engineer guy's like, I thought they were the Army. He's like, who gives a shit? Right, <laughs> like, right. No somebody. one knows what they are. Right. Um, but the Army shows up, and it's and it's McDowell from Coming to America. Uh, did, Great movie. Did yeah. you see the second one? I couldn't bring myself to watch it. Are you talking about... Co the, Coming to America too? Yes, I did watch that one. Um, Was I smart for skipping it? It, it was it was okay, but it, it could have been done a lot better. I thought. Yeah, I thought it, could I, it be was one of those. I'm just like, I, one was incredible. One, I, one listen. One is perfect. Perfect, right? One is like one of the most perfect comedies, right. like ever. like trading places. Yes, you just it's it's it, phenomenal. It, it, it worked well, but when <sighs> when you make a a sequel, the problem you have to do is not only do you have to re recreate that magic. Yeah, you got to make it believable. Yeah, um, and that's why I like two. Yeah, because. It's fun. It this, still this keeps too, this yeah. right. Yeah, um, but coming to America too. I uh, it, it was okay. I'm I watched the that. trailer and I was yeah, just I, like, I like that. And I was like, I've watched a lot of disappointing reboots the last few years, and I'm I'm just Wesley kinda... Snipe was the best part of the movie. He he. I was interested to see him in he, it. He actually was good in the movie. I like, like Wesley Snipe. But I'm he's ready for like a big Wesley Snipe's comeback. But he's not the main character. Yeah. So when you're you're. Uh, yeah. Is the best part of it. I movie. really want a, a nice big Wesley Snipes comeback. I, I think hope we're so. overdue for it. I, I hope he gets it together. Because he's awesome. I like him in um, 
ever watch that show, What We Do in the Shadows, the vampire show? Right, right. He plays himself in it, but like the real life Wesley Snipes has become a vampire. <laughs> yes, he, he, yeah. he was a, I've always liked him. I like yeah, I love movies. Him. And, right. um, we reviewed the first Blade a while back. Oh, Check yes. that episode out. I, I I was the first one to go see I, yeah. my friends. I was like, I want to go see Blade. <laughs> yeah, it was like, awesome. I, go, I went love by myself, movie. yes. Um, not excited for the new Blade, but anyway. So yeah, um, the army starts to take control and John is suspicious of them because John McClane has like a spider sense we don't know about where he yes. just knows when thing when people are up to no good. It's never explained. Uh, and at the same time, the engineer figures out a way to communicate with the planes. Yes. Like pieces it together. And you're right. that That's something he did independently of John. So you're right. Yeah. The, the, the side characters all get their moment to shine. Yeah. Um, and while this is happening, Esperanza breaks out of his chain. Somehow he killed that poor soldier. We don't know how he did it. But help me out here. Yeah. Aren't all the soldiers uh, on the colonel's side? Not the ones escorting him. That's the what, ones escorting him were not. Because they killed they killed the yeah. poor kid. But yeah. this is my thing. Wouldn't you... Wouldn't you have figured it out before you... Yeah, they show coming up, they show that like the bad guys planted a walkie-talkie for him. Like, you couldn't have planted a soldier on there. Also... Right, that, th that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like that... Also, the country he's from, I think it's like a fictional country. Right, that I think shows South up in, America. Yeah, it's yes. a South America. And I think it actually shows up in a different movie. They use that name. Mm -hmm. Um... You think they would have been like, oh, this guy's like bad news. We should probably put 10 soldiers around him. Not just one guy and two pilots. We should probably put a lot of people if around he, If him. he was that bad if of a person. Right, like like, like yeah. El Chapo coming to your house. Yeah. I, I might need more than two people. <laughs> yeah, this guy's up to no good. There's people who don't want him arrested. Right. We should probably put a lot of people with him. Uh, but he breaks out. Now, have you ever seen the TV cut of this? The edit it for television TV cut. Probably. It's yeah. got one of the most famous funny things. And I think people don't realize that it actually makes sense in context. So at the end of the film, when he says, yippee ki motherfucker, and he blows up the plane. When you watch the edited for television version, he goes, yippee ki Mr. Falcon. Uh, and by the way, it's not Bruce Willis's voice. It sounds like an Arnold impersonator. It's literally right. like, just play the clip. yippee ki Mr. Falcon. But a lot of people watch it like, oh, that's funny. Instead of motherfucker, they came up with Mr. Falcon. That's so dumb. But if you watch the movie, you find out his code name is Falcon. Falcon. Oh, okay. there's Falcon Hatchling. And I forget what the other one right. is. So it actually makes sense so when you, you pay, watch you, that scene out of context. I mean, it's still ridiculous. Right. But, but it you makes pay a little attention. bit more sense. Yeah. See, there's someone you have to pay attention to. I, 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 I only bring it up because I've been covering a lot of TV cuts lately. Mm -hmm. And they do make some horrible, baffling decisions. But someone was in charge of figuring out a censorship and he studied the movie and he came up with a good idea and decades later we're making fun of him. So cut him a break. Hey, listen. <laughs> so yeah, he kills the pilots uh, and he takes over. Um, now, yeah, my thing, weren't the pilots, that's that's what scares me. Wouldn't, what, weren't the pilots with them? No, they weren't. They weren't. And also he could just fly the plane so I don't know why he even bothers trying to get them to fly. Why didn't you just kill them outright? See, I, you're, you're, you're killing my fantasy uh, movie here, <laughs> but now that I'm going back. We do this a lot on this show. You, you're, you're hurt, my child. There, there but have here, been movies that here, I love. Here, here's the thing. And then I watch for the show, and I'm like, oh, man, I ripped it apart. I know. So 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 my thing is th the pilots had to land the plane, right, or get the plane ready. Yeah. So usually a pilot would know what he's Take it aboard. Yeah. I'm just saying. The pilot would have probably checked the cockpit <laughs> like, and realized that Hey, a they might kill me. <laughs> uh, stewardess, could you, uh, Al 5, uh, take away the gun that might kill me before we fly? So, yeah, um, he and kills the pilots. and he How does he kill the pilot? Huh? How does he kill the pilot? He, like, shoots them in the head. Exactly. Yeah. On a plane. Yeah, I would have been like, Dude, like I know he. Well, the you one could, you could destroy, like, the one guy. There was like a struggle, right. and I get that. That's whatever. But then he kills the. He also shoots the other pilot in the cockpit. It's like no Esperanza, throw him out the back. Don't don't shoot him it, it, in the, the cockpit. cockpit. That's all I'm saying. And of course, right away he's like, I can't see, and I'm losing pressure at the land right now. It's like, well, no, duh, you shot the windows out. Okay. Also, wait. Here's another thing. I because the bad guys could contact their plane. Yes. 
and he's just going to land there anyway. Just let them land. Why are you trying to take over the plane while it's in the air? But th th like, this is what I don't understand. Uh, the, you would get people that are with you. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, very baffling. That's but, all I'm saying. I, I, you know, if I'm going, <laughs> I, I'm not a criminal. I just want to make sure it is. <laughs> so, because <laughs> uh, I know there's some lawyer out there that's uh, going to bring up my past history. But if I was going to be a bad guy, yeah. I would have paid the pilots yeah. because they're going to be helping me. Maybe they're just real patriotic and they can't be bought. <laughs> you ever think about that? <laughs> Those pilots, they're just too noble. Duh. Damn. I, should, well, I can't I'll, crush I'll, their iron. <laughs> I will never be a pilot. So. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, That's all I'm saying. This he he lands on the runway. Now, mm -hmm. the, the runway landing is really tense when John gets caught in the grate. And like the wheel is coming for him, like all right, that's that's pretty tense. That's like old fashioned like action serial it's suspense. Sub. Yes, yes. It's uh, and he gets out right in the nick of time. Um, Raiders of the uh, Lost Ark. Yes. yes, it feels like a mm -hmm. it feels like an Indiana Jones kind of that old action that, serial right. stuff. Now uh, I do like that Esperanza. He's like, oh, freedom, and John just punches him in the face. Oh, <laughs> freedom. Not yet. But yeah, Stewart and his boys show up. Uh, I love this entire scene where they start lobbing all the grenades into the cockpit. He, and, which, again, yeah, you need the plane, right? No, they they asked for a different plane, right? Earlier. But yeah, but yeah, they don't need that plane. Well, you would still want to hold on to a plane just in case. Uh, see, I'm, see, I'd be like, <laughs> because if you you know they they still had to get fuel, they had to get other things. Yeah. Then uh, they they yeah. had a whole other plane. Yeah, set up I for just that. making sure. Yeah, I was. <laughs> but too. Th the more confusing thing here is like, wow, those grenades take a really long time to go off. They all wait patiently for John to get in the ejector seat. That's talent. That yes. is talent. That's I love the eject the the explosion. I, the I thought it was good. I thought I, how they got him out. I used to crack up all the time because it's him screaming. <laughs> Yeah! That's what I like about John McClane. Other like action heroes, they're like real stoic and like angry. John McClane's the opposite, where he's like, ah, he's constantly. He's an everyday you know? guy. He, they yes. wanted they, to believe that this, this was like, is that. This right. is when the action hero chain. We talked a little bit about it in our um like worst Predator episode. Where we went through the Predator mm -hmm. movies. The Predator movies are a good barometer of like what is the action hero of the mm -hmm. time. Because the first one, it's like muscle bound guys, or yeah, and right. then Predator Two, it's like oh, now it's the everyman cop, and then it keeps going right. there. So this is the era of the everyman cop. This is yes, yeah, yeah. so yes. But I love when he's screaming, and then he's like, oh shit, <laughs> and he, he, he yes, yeah, somehow uh, yeah. does not get injured. He does not get injured at all. Uh, there is one thing in this movie, um, the random like ADR, they add like lines for John McClane that they clearly did in editing because you never see right. him say it. One of them here is when he's fighting with the parachute, he's like, where's the door? Where's the fucking door? He has a couple lines like that that are clearly like someone came up with a joke and threw it in the movie later. Yes. I'm just like, I don't know, that feels out of character for him. Well, you gotta, would you say Die Hard 2 is a, a little bit of Beverly Hills Cop? <laughs> With the that could be it too because it could you're be trying to because you're, you're funny. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. he's a comedian by nature. Yeah. So you you try to and he, he is funny in the first one, but yeah, they're they're right. up in the comedy a little right. bit they, in this one. They, they, yeah, comedy a action was very big back then. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes the hero more relatable. One. I mean, that's why the I, Marvel I movies do so well because they're they have stoic heroes that are also cracking jokes and they have a backstory yes. they have something that yeah okay I could believe it now because yes. I well, I mean you know. they were doing well until recently I'm, I, after we, Endgame I'm just like yeah. we won't go because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I go to movies a lot uh, <laughs> I, I, I have a uh, uh, a guy I go shout out to uh, Tyrone uh, we go to movies that's my movie date yeah. and uh, yeah so yeah Endgame was good then they yeah. just uh, and then after that the Spider-Man was okay but yeah. After Thor, Love and Thunder, I'm like, I'm waiting until streaming. I'm not going to the theaters anymore. <laughs> That's a lot of money now. Yeah. You know, $30. Yeah. Oh, and here we go. We have uh, the the main like army guy being like, you're the wrong man in the wrong place at the wrong time. That was uh, 
John a- a- Amos, right? Yes, yes, yes. Which yes. I think was maybe the quote for the first one. I think that was like one of the uh, quotes or something for the first one, and they used it for this, which is that does sum up John McClane. He's the wrong man at the wrong what? place at the wrong time, right. always. But actually, he's the right man because he's the only one who can get the job done. But anyway, right. Uh, the engineer he figures out that the bad guys are located nearby, and he pinpoints it to the church. Church. He's right. like, they have to be close by if they're able to get here so fast. That 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 was the uh, uh, oh, I forgot his name, the engineer. Uh, I have his name. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Who, who was a very, very good character. Art actor. Evans. Yes, he's yes. a very good character. Yeah, like I said, we talked about him, and um, he's like the detective in Fright Night, and he's right. great in that. He's right. great in that. Right. Um, but yeah, they narrow it down to the church, and they get there, and everyone who watches this show knows that I have a crippling fear of eye injuries and eye stabbings. In the last few years, I've had multiple eye injuries and well, surgeries, yeah. so I've lived out my worst Whoa. fear. Yes. You see, look at that nice uh, pen holder someone made for me. It's a bloody stabbed eyeball. Whoa. You've got friends. Yeah, my fans are my fans are really nice. They know that it's my biggest fear, and someone actually did a nice wood burning of a stabbed eyeball pen holder. These assholes. And I don't, don't want to say anything, but look at Hannibal looking at you with one eye. <laughs> I just, uh, we reviewed Hannibal. Um yes. I don't think anyone noticed. I, I put the red rider next to the eyeball. Yes, I know. You shoot your eye out. Shoot, yeah. shoot your eye out. Yes. <laughs> I Those old. are cheap, by the way. I, I I saw that at Walmart. I'm like, oh, that's got to be expensive. That's like an official one. It's like 27 bucks. I'm like, oh, I'm getting that. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I cringe at the icicle in the eye. And again, one of the things I like about John McClane, because like Arnold would kill that guy and be like, ah, oh, whatever. I'm moving on john actually looks at him and is like Ugh! he starts like gagging <laughs> like even he's like horrified by it yes he's uh, your, he's your every yeah every every he's, day guy he's yes. not james bond or them where they're like like james bond will like crack a joke john mcclain's like oh my god he okay. stabbed the guy in the eye all right keep an eye out yes, so, <laughs> yes. So, if um, i had did that i'd have missed and <laughs> first of all it's but my hands get very cold i wouldn't even <laughs> Yeah, luckily he got the eye, because if it hit him anywhere else, it would have just crumbled, I guess. You would think, yes. <laughs> um, See, so yeah, I cringe at that scene every time. The army guys show up to save the day, uh, and there's this big gunfight on, like, the jet ski, or not the jet skis, the... Yeah, this, the uh, 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 snowmobiles. Snow snowmobiles, yeah. sorry. I, or or I snow it. machines, yeah, as yes. they're called some places. Uh, and it's very exciting, but you find out that they're all using blanks. Because... Uh, of the uh, the blue and the red, yes, the clips. blue are the blanks, uh, and yes. the red is dead. dead, dead. Um, it was a Mission Impossible joke, uh, but yeah. So it turns out, like the army guys fighting them and whatnot, it's all a show. Yes. It's all a distraction, so they have a cover for when they escape, which is kind of like Die Hard One, where the plan was to blow up the top of the building and make you think they all killed themselves. Right. <laughs> Uh, but it's not super noticeable. You have to be a mega fan like me to piece that together. So how did they, uh, how did he find out that they were blanks? Uh, he went to shoot the guy and nothing happened. <laughs> I like that. He shoots him. He's like, what? He's like, what the hell's going on? Right. But I do like that they shoot his snowmobile and like it explodes in midair and a truck goes by and they're like, oh, well, he's definitely dead this time. It's like, if I'm Esperanza, I'm like, no, go over there right now and make sure he's dead. <laughs> this is like five times he's come yeah, back already. And he's, he, yeah, he's still pissed off that he got punched. Yeah. <laughs> I, if someone punches me in the face, I want I want finger. Oh, prints. he was punched and shot because right. yeah, Esperanza goes to run away and John's like, sit down, and, like shoots him in the shoulder yeah, or something. I, and you can, you can always shoot someone in the shoulder moving. Yeah, the yeah, then you're fine if you get shot in the shoulder. That's yeah. what I learned. You get shot in the leg or shoulder, you're fine. I don't know. I'd be screaming. I would be screaming like the, the little coward I am. Yes. They always do that in Terminators. Like, oh yeah, it's a leg wound. They'll be fine. I'm like, yeah. probably crippled for life. Did you right. get an or artery? Keep, like, keep moving. Keep moving. <laughs> we'll be back. Um. So yeah, it turns out the army guys are bad guys. And I do feel bad for the new guy who's with them. Because you find out like they, they there's this new dude, their communication in, in guy, the truck. a replacement. Yeah, he... he yeah, boy. and they like slit his throat. It's like one of the most nasty like throat slits I've ever seen right. in the movie. And I'm like, huh, man. W- which is amazing is how efficient they can kill. Yeah. But they can't kill John McClane. <laughs> they can't kill they Johnny. Can't. Got, it's, <laughs> it's what they call plot armor. <laughs> right. <laughs> like the, the, uh, everyone out. The bullets oh, will miss everyone else. That conversation was took less than a minute. <laughs> and we're now on yeah. 72 minutes and he's still alive. Yeah. Also, I don't think they need to kill him right then and there. 
Just, yeah, I, I don't. I would if I'm in that truck. I'm like, dude, could you have done it like after we left the truck? Then we're just next to a dead guy. Like, well, here's the thing: wasn't he the communication guy? Just in case you might have need him back in the day. They didn't need him anymore. Okay, so. They didn't need him anymore. They have John Leguizamo or something. <laughs> and whatever happens to John Leguizamo? Because like he only has like a few scenes. Uh, I remember him complaining years ago on some show because it's like the camera zooms up and they like zoom up on him and then as soon as he's about to talk they like cut to something else and you just hear his voice and he's like he's like that was gonna be my first close-up in a major film and they cut away from it all systems tap colonel i what between me what what was his breakout role then because he was always in so like the little i know he had a he had like a sketch comedy show I mean, for the movies. Yeah, I'm trying to think. What was his breakout movie? The, the only one I could think of is uh, uh, Executive De Decision. Maybe that was it. It definitely wasn't the And then pest. he hated that movie because uh, yeah. Steven Seagal <laughs> kept, beat, kept beating him up. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't like Steven Seagal. <laughs> I don't know why. You know what? I'm actually friends with a director who worked with Steven Seagal, and he said he never had a problem with him. But I've heard... I've. I've known other people who work with Steven Seagal and they're like, that guy's an asshole. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't, I, yeah. I, I did watch some of his, uh, why they hate Steven Seagal. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. but John, yeah, he found, I, I'm yeah. really trying to think what was his breakout. I, I'm thinking executive decision. Maybe. I think he was more of like a bigger TV guy. In yeah. The 90s. He, yeah. He did. He did some, he had he's a talented, don't get me wrong. No, no, I like talented. it. I just, I, I don't know. get like this, kick that he's I, on right I, I, now i don't listen uh you know people are, are very upset it's yeah. a, it's a different environment yeah. now that you know uh, someone can't play a character yeah if you're good and you're talented you can yeah. play it no i get that that's I mean, why it's called it. fantasy it's just it's annoying when he's doing it because i'm like you're not italian <laughs> it makes me so mad right. i'm like john the problem here is they didn't get italians to play it and right. you're so, not italian so if they replace eddie murphy with donkey and use someone else <laughs> hey we didn't it's a donkey yeah it's a donkey it's i a, mean i wouldn't replace eddie lead. murphy with donkey i probably would just leave donkey out if that was the case well, right, that's like right. a big character yeah, to replace right, right. um so yeah anyway back to enough without donkey yes <laughs> um so McLean has to prove that it's all a setup. And the way he proves this is by just opening fire on tennis friends to prove that they're No, plates. no, he opened fire in a room full of police officers. <laughs> and and no all, one and well, you know. Wait, I love that they all duck. <laughs> None of them <laughs> tried to shoot him at all. Well. Which, by the way, I think Dennis France is their boss, so it's like, okay, how shitty is he if their first instinct is, we got to get out of here instead of, oh no, we got to yeah, help that guy. Right. Uh, that's, that's That was amazing part. That, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, look, I don't know too much about guns. Is there a way to prove their blanks without firing them? Could you, like, take the bullet out and be like, look, it's a blank, like. I, I've never, um, no. no, I've never. I feel like, and I, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't point a gun at anyone, and and then <laughs> don't get me wrong. This is the more exciting way me. to do it for a movie. Oh, really it see. was, it was a great. It, it yeah. the, the uh, first of all, I will say uh, Dennis is acting there because he he yeah. looked t terrified and like yeah. And then I love how he immediately switched. He's like, all right, <laughs> yeah. it's time to kick it. <laughs> like, what's his gun up? Right, like he's had enough because the army guys were kind of dicks to him. Because they were yes. trying to get on John's good side, and they're like, get out of here, guys. Like, all right, all right. time for revenge. Right, yes. Um, so, yeah, John survives. <laughs> A room full of cops do not shoot him as he's opening fire. Uh, John figures out uh, that the terrorists, uh, Esperanza, and the army guys, they're all going to take off together. Um, and while this is happening, Dick, on the plane. I love him. Yeah, uh, he's, he's tapped in to the frequency. He knows what's happening. And then he calls the news station on the phones that still work. And somehow he's got the story of the uh, century. Yeah. Again. Again. Yes. And, and and the news people say, oh, let's try it again because it worked so well for us the last <laughs> time. Let's just, let's just uh, let's just put our careers on this guy who yeah. tanked the last time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think he did a good job of covering it last time. The problem is he <laughs> got kids involved with it, which he probably shouldn't have done, which screwed them over. And he does it again in this one. I, I know it was the 80s, but yeah. there was a lawyer out there that was like, thank you. Thank yeah. you. 
They, he causes a mass hysteria at the airport because right. it gets on the news. And by the way, they're watching TV on the plane. They're watching The Simpsons, which I think is the first time The Simpsons were on a, in a major right. movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the uh, the Electroshock Family Therapy episode. Uh, but then the news plays on the TV. But here's the thing: did, yeah. did they not shut down the uh, the uh, no the runways? They, they did shut down the runways, right? They shut down the runways and they're so low fuel. Wouldn't do you look out? That big window and say, honey. Yeah. I'm no, just saying. They, they, well, Dick mentions it earlier. He's like, right. there's a lot of planes out there who are really close to us. Right. This isn't and, normal. And right, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying. You yeah. Could, and I love that every that. time he wants to look out the window, he keeps getting in her face. It's like, well, you hate her. 50, what about that? Yeah, the, the yeah. restraining order. Yeah. <laughs> who is, should be restraining who? <sighs> so mm -hmm. stupid. Um, Thank God for grandma. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, he causes a mass of panic, mass hysteria. Yes. <laughs> Holly ends up electrocuting him in the bathroom with the taser. <laughs> right. <laughs> because you go into a bathroom and you don't lock the door. No, you never lock the door in a he, bathroom, he, obviously. He didn't lock the door. She Because she walked in. She walked in and tasered him. Like... Uh, yeah. You really? know what? Have you ever seen that guy play a likable character in a movie? I can only think of... I can only think of a handful... Go Ghostbusters, he was... Uh, he was an he, asshole. He was an asshole. Uh... Both these movies, uh, I know he's another Fright film. Night. Was he in Fright Night? I don't think he was in Fright Night. No, he was. In, he was in another horror movie that he. Was I think he was in a horror movie. I just yeah, can't think yeah, of I it. can't think of a movie. But was he, he was, a bad guy? Was he a dick in that he one? He was a. He was King King D. <laughs> King D. Yeah. Apparently, that's like a thing. He's like, yeah, but he, he he. Would you say he's a multi-millionaire now? I mean, I don't know about millionaire. Problem. Probably, yeah, probably from probably, residuals, residuals and whatnot. Residuals, right. So apparently, he like gets a lot of shit from people like. It, it went around the time these movies are coming oh, out because yeah, yeah. they couldn't disassociate. They're yeah, like, you're an asshole. Shame. It's like, I'm just a character. I'm right, sorry. That's, it's, yeah, that's a yeah. shame. Yeah. Um, so John, because he's he was nice to the news lady. I mean, he told her to fuck off. But he, I guess he was nicer than other people. Right. He gets her to lend him the news helicopter so he well, can he, chase the plane down. He told her for a story. He said, you yeah. want a story. Now, come on now. He, yes. He, 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 he's nice to her. Yeah, he's like, look, give me that the, helicopter. I'll let you film the whole thing. I'll Yeah, yes. I have a story for you. So yeah. John is getting civilians involved. <laughs> Classic hero move. Right. And, and there and and this is on the airfield. Yes. So this, I didn't I didn't know you could have helicopters just fly through. But that's just look, look. Um, so. There's a the people in air traffic control. They got a lot of their hands. They're letting <laughs> things <laughs> slip by. Honey, do, like two planes have blown up on their runway. Right. They never explain who's clearing that rubble so other people can land. But anyway, uh, he uses the helicopter. Mm -hmm. um, they use. They literally shot a helicopter over an airplane on a runway, yes. like all in camera. Uh, and I know that's like a big thing now. It's like we all miss in camera stunts. It's like, yeah, there used to be some really yeah. cool. In I get like insurance wise why you don't want to yes. do that. Uh, but one I could think of a really good camera stunt was. Um, you ever see the second Shaft movie, the original Shaft movie? Yes. There is an awesome helicopter chase where, like, it goes, like, under construction and stuff, and it got me, like, super nervous. <laughs> uh, and I miss that because um, a few years later, I love Mission Impossible. I love all the Mission Impossibles. I was about to say Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible, but that had, like, a really obvious CG helicopter. Right. I'm like, oh, man, we really missed right. out. Even the new Mission Impossible, it's like, you know, this is exciting, but a lot of it is digital. I kind of miss, like, the in-camera well, stuff. See, because, first of all, we, we've we been so spoiled now because now we we know the magic. Because yeah. people show us and everything. But back yeah. then, you didn't know how certain things well, went through, and you didn't appreciate. Like That was one thing I really, in talking about effects, I really enjoyed about Die Hard 4. Because everyone harps on, like, the jet scene being CGI and whatnot. But people, like, don't realize, like, how much, like, in camera, like, they used miniature. They went real old school for a lot of Die Hard 4. Right. And they literally threw a car into a helicopter in that movie. Yes. And the only digital thing were the rotors on the helicopter. But they literally did that. So I miss seeing stuff like that. I, I believe, like you said, insurance, no. uh, yeah. safety, and... Money. They can. You could. If I could do that on a computer, yeah. why am I going to use a? But that's one reason I really like Christopher Nolan, other than the fact that I was in I, The Dark Knight Rises, and I'm I'm sure you know that. I'm yes. Sure yes. Like, you tell everyone that. The, the whole family. Yes. The whole family, family knows. Knows. <laughs> I'm sure you watch it all the time. The football scene comes on. You're like, oh, there's Tony somewhere. He's Wait, <laughs> your father was the first one to tell me. Yes. So yes. okay. So there you go. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, that Dark Knight Rises uh, poster yeah. over there. Yeah. 
Uh, a fan sent that in. Uh, that's like the first hundred or so episodes. That is the name of an episode and a time code for every time I mentioned I was in the Dark Knight Rises. Oh, okay. As you can see, I mentioned it a lot. Yes, yes. And <laughs> hey, listen, I'm I. Now that I know, I'm trying to get into movies myself too. So, yeah. I, uh, like I said, but the point it. with Christopher Nolan, I actually like that he does a lot of these. He's allowed to because he's earned so much credit with the right. studios. But like, I didn't really like the movie Tenet. I don't know if you saw Tenet. I saw Tenet. I, I thought. Uh, the thing was, and I love my wife dearly, but she's very, very uh, highly educated yeah. and very. So she, she said, when well, she made a good point, she, she couldn't put everything together because it kept changing. Yeah. And I right, so. I have issues with that movie, but the one thing I like about it is. I like the kitchen scene was one of my Yeah, that was cool. But like they literally, they were like, all right, well, how are we going to do this scene where the plane crashes into a building? And it was like, oh, do we do it digital? Do we mi do miniatures? No, Christopher Nolan crashed a plane into, into a, bu a building. building. Yeah. Hey, it's like, hey, we have a plane no one's using. We have a building that needs to be demolished. Let's just crash it. So like, even even when Nolan puts out like a a film that's not great, I appreciate all the technical stuff because it reminds me of movies like this. Yes, where they would do it in camera, do the miniatures and whatnot. And I don't hate CGI. I like CGI. It's yes. the over reliance on it that it bothers me. But anyway, leads to an awesome fight. Uh, they're fighting on the wing of the plane. He, but yeah. you have to understand, it's supposed to be a blizzard. It's supposed to be a blizzard. He's been out in the cold, you would say, at least two hours. Yes. So, hypothermia <laughs> might come in, but he's able to jump onto that plane. Onto the wing of the on plane. On the wing of Not the slip. Plane, not slip. His head, <laughs> and his coat is open. So yeah, I don't, it's I, open. I, and I'm going to let you know, I don't know if, fighting with a coat open is like one of the hardest things you yeah. can do. Yeah. Um, he he lands on a plane. Yeah, and and then John Amos's character is like, "I'm gonna get him," and it's like, "Oh, they're clearly gonna shoot him off the wing." No, John Amos goes out and starts punching him. They, they, Hank, yeah, they yeah. have to do, uh, yeah, because I would, I'd have shot him. Well, the weird thing is, I guess John Amos was they didn't realize he was on the wing because he he like attacks John. Oh, he uses yeah. the coat. Yeah, he, he uses, uses the, the coat. coat to, to, yeah. right, to, but while they're fighting, Colonel Stewart's there with a gun. And yeah. he has a clear shot of John the entire time. I have been around military people. Yeah. Honor. Huh? Honor. They want, He wasn't going to shoot because they, the guy was there? No, it's honor. He's not going to They. They won't. No. He was, well, I feel like Colonel Stewart could have walked up to him. Or, or I could have helped. I've, yeah, I've, or could have helped. Yo, bro, uh, you want to... You know, yeah, he's here. just watching, and then go get the other colonel because he punched him in his face. <laughs> yeah. And again, awesome. <laughs> he throws John Amos through the, the engine, which, by the way, John Amos, he's like his feet are kicking on it. I'm like, no, I think it would just suck you right in. All I kept thinking about was uh, his wife. <laughs> damn, 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 <laughs> Florida. <laughs> so, damn, damn, damn. So yeah, he gets sucked in the engine. Blood sprays everywhere. Even John's like, ah, but yeah. then. So he's out of the wouldn't, picture. Well, wouldn't the plane? This is what I don't understand. With bird strikes, the plane uh, has problems. With a full-grown man, that that plane's still able to go. I'm just saying the engine. Maybe yeah, that's a good just, point. That's I'm a good just, point. Sorry, I. I he, <laughs> Tony has destroyed my movie. I will, <laughs> every Christmas, I have to watch something else. I now. guess. I guess when the plane is flying, if it happens while the plane is flying on, on the ground, that can cause some problems. Okay. But if it's on the ground, they can always just <laughs> slow down and clean it off, and then right. go back again. Yes. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, so Colonel Stewart, he can now just shoot John. But no, the gun disappears and Stuart pulls out a knife. He's ready for a good old fashioned knife. Well, fight. Obviously you did not pay attention to the beginning of the film. Okay. What was he doing? He was doing Tai Chi. Which tells you <laughs> he is what? He's look, look, he's a <laughs> badass. I get that. There's too much on the line here. Hand like hand. they're literally at the end of their plan. You can't fuck around. Just shoot John and go back. Well, in. Let, let's 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 <laughs> let's just look at something because yeah. I, I I I don't want to seem like I uh, I know much, but yeah. they uh, tried to run him over. Mm -hmm. They tried to shoot him. Yeah. They tried to stab him. 
I guess the last thing to do is fight. <laughs> just, like, just like, fight him fight, fight, fight. I mean, <laughs> like, I, I, like, I'll be like, well, I, just, and, I tried everything. And you know what? I'll give him credit. Stewart technically wins that fight. He does. He does, but yes. he's also not very perceptive because John undid the fuel, and you can just hear the fuel going <laughs> and spraying, and Colonel Stewart's like, yeah, whatever, and he goes back in the plane. <laughs> right. Uh, yes. But yeah, it leads to the ultimate yippee ki motherfucker. yippee ki motherfucker. Or yippee ki Mr. Falcon, whatever version you're watching. Uh, and I love that it's like a fireball that shoots up in the air and just blows them all up. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. That were, all the runway lights were out, right? Yeah. So where did the lights come from? Wait, which lights? The When he... Yeah was fighting on the plane and he fell off it was lit so you oh yeah no there are a lot of overhead lights there's no lights no, on the runway no yeah no. but yeah there are a lot of overhead oh, lights. like like so when they said it was total <laughs> obvious well that was like we um we did a commentary i'm track. not coming back here because you're destroying all my movie uh like i did a uh, i did a commentary track with uh our one co-host casey we did alien versus predator the oh, first one. I, I love that movie. really yes yeah, anyway because it's goofy i see you you know what you know what i i deal with a I, lot of i craziness. have a soft spot for it now but the whole time we're joking it's like how is any of this stuff lit they're in a pyramid under a glade like how like, that's like that, that's what i'm saying they literally should be like this the whole time right but during the fight scene it's lit and yeah. then when he falls off yeah it's lit because it's, yeah. you could see yeah the, but so so maybe there's overhead lights okay yes but right right by the plane by right by the plane yes. but there's still not any landing lights but don't worry the big explosion in the fire is now the runway light. That's their landing strip. And a guy has to let you know. Yeah. Don't worry. They can figure it out because. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess they won't run over any of the jagged metal and stuff that's there. Again, we never see them moving the rubble out of the way. No, I do. We do see them landing the plane. Yeah. I now don't get me. But I believe they do show the plane debris here and the plane's landing over here like because it was okay along, i guess so so yeah so but i'm is, still there was an yeah, explosion it probably right. shot things everywhere well, <laughs> i do know because uh i was at the airport they do sweep even a uh a fraction of can mm. can tear a yeah, tire away so, yeah, yeah so they do yeah so yeah but here's the thing that was there a blizzard has it been snowing for a while yes did you see a a, a plow? No, or we never. So how did they? We never see a plow ever. I'm just. I'm just Could you imagine? This is my last. Plowing? This is my last time here because you have destroyed. <laughs> I, I, folks, um, I, I, I can't. I, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> the only With camera two. Yeah. Just, there's never. <laughs> there's never a plow. There's never. Right. Time. But I would right. love to see a plow where they're like, oh man, another plane blew up. Anyway, I got to clear that snow. <laughs> but. When Holly, when they land and, you know, the, the yeah. big climax, you see the fire trucks and everything. Yeah. Come, but no plows. Like No plows. No plows. No plows. Uh, but there is a happy ending here. He, he, uh, it's Christmas. He's not going to give him the ticket anymore for his car. No. So but does he get his car? Uh, yeah, yeah. They were, I, I assume he called his <laughs> but, cousin or whatever. Because he never did. Yeah, and it's just like, <laughs> My hey. My cousin uh, Vinny. Yeah, he's like, hey, give him his car back. Um, Marvin's there. Marvin's willing to drive them in a golf cart, and they're like, "No, we're good." Well, Marvin's a good. Yeah, and and it, you want to drive a, a, a golf cart in a blizzard? <laughs> yeah, in a Cause blizzard because it, it will move. It, you it are, won't just it won't just rotate constantly. Thanks, so and you have really. <laughs> I was going to watch this. Christmas. However, a uh, really cool thing at the end: the final shot was the first time they did a digital composite of live action actors onto a traditional map painting. Mm -hmm. Because the last shot, it's like clearly a painted map painting, right. but they like digitally composited them there. It was the first digital compositing. The widespring, right. Because digital compositing is better than traditional compositing because you get, I've talked about this a million times. It's like a lot cleaner and whatnot. 
That's why compositing got a little bit better in the 90s. And now it's seamless. You can't well, even tell see, half the time. You know more than I do. I just, <laughs> I just pay money to watch. If you watch older films like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like Star Wars and stuff, mm -hmm. you'll see that like sometimes, even the first Die Hard, there's a good example in the first Die Hard, uh, Bruce Willis looks down the elevator shaft. Yes. And it's a composite. And if you look, like the side of his head is just disappearing. Oh, so or because it, it was either that or you get the hard black line, which you see in a lot of old Star Wars. Before see they now, it. now every time I look at a movie, I'm going to be yeah. see you destroyed, Mike. And I'm sure like, the fans is I'm Santa sure the Claus fans are like, real? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure the fans are sitting there going, "Tony, you've said this a million times. Shut up." It's like, well, there's a new person here. Oh, right. <laughs> I want Thank them to you know for what I'm schooling me. About. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's one big happy ending. And Holly and John live happily ever after. Just kidding. They get a divorce and his kids hate him in the next three films. Yes. So yes. <laughs> good job, John McClane. Well, that, that keeps to a cop. Yeah. This, yeah. Th divorce, please. Yeah. <laughs> now, I really, I do enjoy this movie. When I say it's, until, besides five, when I say it's like my least favorite, that doesn't mean I hate it. I'm just like, it. when it comes to Die Hard... Well, what did you? What, what would make it one of your better films if they did what? I think if the plot was just a little less convoluted, if it had Al, I really would have liked Al. Well, see, so you, you like it. Yes. Right. Um, but no, for, for the most part, I enjoy it. Uh, it's just, the only time I really watch it is during the Christmas season if I'm doing it, a double feature. Right. Whereas Die Hard 1, I could watch any time of the year. Okay. Die Hard 3, that's like a summer movie. I mean, I think it is on like the 4th of July. Yeah, it, I think, yeah. 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 And, uh, and Al is replaced by Angry. Yeah, An angry that's, that's what it's yeah. like. Okay, well, you got rid of Al, but you gave me Samuel Jackson, so I'm going to let that one slide. Right, yeah. But then so. Die Hard 4, which I like, it's like, by the way, he has no black friends now. Here's Justin Long. I'm like, oh, that's a downgrade. I, that's well, I, I, th I think, uh, I don't think there were many... Uh, in a, in in a movie to begin with, in four, I don't I don't. Know yeah, there no, there were there was yeah, and then five. But they were they they, they mass that by being in Europe. Well, that was in five. Yeah, right. Four right. was DC. <laughs> DC. Okay. I mean, yeah. Well, but, five but. five was annoying. They had one of the little boys from Die Hard three mm -hmm. uh, that was with Samuel Jackson. He plays a cop in five, but it's like not he's not the same character. It's like, why yeah. wouldn't you make that Samuel Jackson's like yeah, nephew like, the, like that? It's right. the same actor. Why wouldn't you do that? Yes. Now, five, it was like, hey, here's Jai Courtney. I like Jai Courtney like now, but like 2012 to 2014, they were like trying to make him like the next big thing and it just wasn't working. You ever see I Frankenstein? Yes, I did. Yeah, that movie was terrible. And then he was also in that awful Terminator movie, which we reviewed, Terminator Genesis. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh, he sucked. I, 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 one thing with franchise, like I'm looking forward to seeing Avatar. Really? Yeah. But with franchise, you got to be careful because mm. sometimes you might not be able to, to uh, get that same magic back. Yeah, yeah. And Die Hard Four, I feel like that's like a fun action movie. People. I've, people say it doesn't really feel Die Hard. I'm like, no, I can get that, but it's a fun action movie. If you if you kept three. Yeah, I, I would have been. Yeah. I would have been happy. Well, that. three is when they were smart. So, like I said, this Die Hard two, it does for me. I think it's an okay sequel, but it does feel like more of the same. Three, they change things up a lot. I think they got. They realized that they had to come up with a better. Yeah, form because of, not only did they already recycle themselves, every other movie is was doing Die Hard at right. that point. So, that, it, like Speed, Die Hard right. on a bus. This, it's like all right, we got to do something different. So, Die Hard three was like a whole. New thing. They had a the buddy. They had a buddy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he kept some things from the original, mm -hmm. like, like you know, the 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 bad guys have like a twist and whatnot. They kept that, but like the action stuff, it's like all over the place. It's like the entire city. It's no longer he's stuck in an area. Right. Uh, I will say, people usually call this Die Hard on the airplane, but it's really not because he's not on an airplane. He's in an airport. Yeah. However, if you want to see Die Hard on an airplane, I think I have it here. Passenger Fifty Seven. Wesley with, with Wesley Snipes always bet on black. <laughs> yes, I, that was one of my favorite. Uh, I was like, why? When I first started going to like casinos in my early twenties, I remember <laughs> I remember playing roulette and I remember being like really drunk. Yeah, and I like I put, I put the money down. And I just looked at my friend. I was like, always oh, bet on black. And then I made like seventy bucks. I'm like, thank you, Wesley. <laughs> oh. And that, that that's what was his peak. I think he did three straight movies that he, he yeah. yeah that that yeah no. Pastor Fifty Seven is a good time. I think Bruce Payne's the bad guy in that. Yes. Halle Berry's in that. 
Uh, there are good like diehard kind of ripoffs, but oh, there, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah there's they're, they're definitely but, diehard. But, but uh, yeah. Under Siege wasn't one of them. <laughs> Under Siege was fine. Under Siege is fun. Under you Siege like, is good for the bad guys. I, well, Gary Busey and Tommy Lee Jones. They I think make that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. They made the movie. He, yeah, he just was a. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah you could have put any hero in there, and it wouldn't have mattered. But yeah, he was really did. good. Yeah, they. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh. Oh, Air Force One is another Die Hard on a plane. I. In fact, see, I I like that. I, yeah. and I and I got to see Air Force One. So yeah. Like the real Air Force One? Yeah. I did get oh, I've never once. seen the real yeah, Air Force yeah, One. I don't know why I would ever see the real Air Force One. It, but. Yeah. When, when, you know, I did see it. It's a, Maybe I flew over Philly once. I don't know. But the movie itself, yes. Uh, yes. What, what was cooler? Seeing the actual Air Force One or seeing the movie Air Force One? <laughs> Probably seeing the Air Force One because it's impressive. It okay. okay. But the movie itself, yeah. again, I go to movies to be entertained. Yeah. It was very entertaining. What am I'm I? realistic. Realistic. <laughs> it, I know. Yeah. No, no. Die Hard 2. they pulled the uh, curtains back. But. Yeah. Die Hard 2 is a fun time, even if I nitpick it, which I do on this show. Uh, it doesn't take me out of the movie. I still enjoy it. I just think a lot of the whole Remember Die Hard 1 gets a little annoying. Uh, but other than that, it's a good time. It's it's inoffensive. As long as it's during the Christmas season. As long as it's during the, the Christmas, Christmas season. season. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to whip this movie out in May. Like, I'm not yeah, going to. I'm just right. not. There's other action movies. You I'd would recommend. do. That would be three. <laughs> that would May. be three. three yeah. Well, three, I feel like is more of a July movie. Uh, honestly, if it's like May or something, I'm whipping out Fifth Element if I want a Bruce Willis movie. <laughs> I, and you know what? That's one of my favorite movies of all time. We reviewed it on this show. I uh, love you Fifth see, Element. You, you should have told me. I love it. I'm I, sorry. I, I, I Something about that movie. I just. I it's, just it really is. There's it, something about that movie that's so good. Did you yeah. see uh, Valerian? Is someone watching this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, that was I, I the did. movie he wanted to do in the 90s. And he couldn't do it. The technology was there, so he did Fifth Element instead. Well, I'm glad he... Uh, and then he finally did Valerian. It's like, nah, the thing you came up with was way better than this. I, I, yeah, I just thought it was fast moving. It was funny. Yeah, it, it was it fun. just action. It was good. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with Die Hard 2. Check out Die Hard 2. Let us know what you think. Is it a solid sequel? Is it more of the same? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you agree with uh, Siskel and Ebert? Do you give it two enthusiastic thumbs up? Two of them? Um... If you want to find Mike, I commit crimes in Philly, I guess. You can find <laughs> Please please do not. Uh, Everyone else I know has a social media. I'm like, I don't think Mike does. No, I'm, like, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm old. Sorry, Dad. Uh, My goal is one day you have to like arrest someone. They're like, hey, I saw your diary. <laughs> you saw me, yes. <laughs> what well, do you think about Die Hard 3? Uh, <laughs> um, Look, you might get recognized, man. I've been recognized places. Oh, well, that's because you're famous. <laughs> that's because I'm very famous. You're a famous person. I, 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 uh, people can walk right by yeah. me and still would know. Did I, tell, did I tell you about uh, what happened to me in L.A.? No. Well, uh, see, look, you're out in L.A. Well, well I was out in L.A. for my friend's show. I've told this story, but I don't want to tell Mike. Um, I had too much chocolate. Right. I had way too much chocolate. I had 100 milligrams of chocolate, which I was not prepared for. Um I didn't read the thing. It was just too much chocolate for me. Right. So I was wearing my Rocky Four tracksuit, and I'm at the bar. I've told the story, but like I, I've told part of the story before, where I had to introduce my friend's show, and I did a terrible job. Right. And then I sat on stage, spacing out the whole time, mm. talking out loud sometimes, and then talking inside sometimes. Uh, but afterwards, I'm walking around the bar. I don't know where I was going, and a fan who just happened to be at the bars, recognized my Rocky tracksuit. And he's like, Tony from Act the Movies. I'm like, what's up? <laughs> I was just like, did you enjoy the show? He's like, what show? I just got here for something else. I'm like, oh, <laughs> lucky you. I just happened to be on the other side of the country on too much chocolate. And what's up, buddy? <laughs> did, did they take care of you? Did at least take you to a hotel and let you sleep at all? Or? Or they well, the put night, you on a bench? The night ended with me and my friend Cranberry Dave, who also did too much chocolate, uh, we were in a car. We went to a second bar and we of told course. Mint Salad and Riley, who have been on the show many times, we told them, hey, we'll be in in 10 minutes. We just need to chill here for a bit. And then two hours went by. Me and Cranberry Dave never got out of the car. We just stared at the backseat of the car and then we were going back to the hotel. I'm like, oh, we never made it out. <laughs> the Adventures of You. The Adventures of Tony from Back the Movies. Yes. I've sworn off chocolate. Thanks. <laughs> sworn it off. <laughs> 
<laughs> but so, anyway. So I can't take you to Dunkin' Donuts. So. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> anyway. Have fun with all that. Uh, have a good Christmas season. Watch our Die Hard, but it's a Christmas movie short coming out that should be out this week. If I'm looking things, forward to that. At the time of this recording, we haven't finished filming yet, so you got time. <laughs> uh, hopefully, it'll be out. And thank you. That's it. Goodbye. some chestnuts jingle some bells they're playing like felicia versus bishamon and if bishamon ends with a certain move you just cut felicia in half did you make sure to see orchid's thong yeah. here's 30 more chances as she spins around see you've got the batgirl shirt on and you're oh. wearing a robin t-shirt batgirl and robin to your batman and Turtles ha is like Star Wars in the, like, Star Wars is a 70s thing that ran into the 80s. Yeah. Turtles started in the 80s, but really grew in the 90s. Yeah. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talk, talk, talking about tapes.